Apparently this is Sweden's non-stealth Russian fighter killer. The commander of Sweden's Air Force, Mats Helgeson, recently made the bold statement that his country's Saab Gripen E fighter could beat Russia's formidable fleet of Suhoi jets with none of the expensive stealth technology the US relies on. Gripen, especially the E model, is designed to kill Suhois. There we have a black belt, Helgeson told YLE at a presentation in Finland, where Sweden is trying to export the jets. Russia's Suhoi fighters have achieved a kind of legendary status for their ability to outmaneuver US fighter jets in dogfights and pull off dangerous and aggressive stunts in the air, but Gripen may have cracked the code. The Gripen can't carry the most weapons and has no real stealth. And it isn't the longest range, the fastest, or even the cheapest jet. But it has a singular focus that makes it a nightmare for Russia's fighter jets. Justin Bronk, an aerial combat expert at the Royal United Services Institute, told Business Insider that like the A-10 Warthog was built around a massive cannon, the Gripen was built around electronic warfare. Virtually all modern jets conduct some degree of electronic warfare, but the Gripen E stands above the rest, according to Bronk. Montage showing the different phases of an acrobatic maneuver performed by a Suhoi Su-35. Gripen pilots don't like to show their cards by demonstrating the full power of the jet's jamming and training. But the one time they did, it completely reversed the course of the mock battle in training, Bronk said. Several years ago the Gripen pilots got tired of being made fun of by German Typhoon pilots and came to play with their wartime electronic warfare and gave them a hell of a hard time, Bronk said. One of the Gripens was, reportedly able to appear on the left wing of a typhoon without being detected, by using its, extremely respected, jamming ability, Bronk said. It would be fair to assume the Gripen is one of the most capable electronic warfighters out there, he said, adding that the Gripens that baffled the typhoons were of the C-D series, which have much less powerful electronic warfare capabilities than the E-series Gripens that Helgeson described. To defeat Russia's fearsome fighters and surface-to-air missiles, the US has largely turned to stealth aircraft. Stealth costs a fortune and must be built into the shape of the plane. If Russia somehow cracks the code of detecting stealth-shaped fighters, the US's F-35, the most expensive weapon system in history, is cooked. But Saab took a different, and cheaper, approach to combating Russia's fighters and missiles by focusing on electronic attack which gives them an advantage over stealth because they can evolve the software without a ground-up rebuild, according to Bronk. Saab plans to update the software on the Gripen E every two years, giving it more flexibility to meet evolving challenges, according to Bronk. But Bronk noted one issue with electronic warfare. The problem with basing a survival strategy around an electronic warfare suite is you don't really know if it's going to work, he said. Even if it does, it's going to be a constant battle between your adversary and you, to get the edge on the enemy fighters as waveforms and methods of attack continuously change. However, Sweden benefits from a Russian focus on US fighters. Sweden is too small really to optimize your counter-electronic warfare capabilities against, Bronk said. If war broke out between Russia and the West, Russia would likely try hardest to push back on US electronic warfare rather than against Sweden's Gripen S, of which there would be only a few dozen. The whole concept of the Gripen E is to operate in Swedish territory, take advantage of all sorts of uneven terrain under cover of friendly surface-to-air missiles with a superb EU suite which should in theory keep it safe from the majority of Russian missiles and air-to-air -air threats, Bronk said. Additionally, the Gripen E can fire almost any missile made in the US or Europe, if you couple a very effective radar with excellent EU and a meteor, the most effective longest-range air-to-air missile which is resistant against rushes, jammers. There's no reason not to assume it wouldn't be pretty damn effective, Bronk said. If you're a flanker pilot, it's probably a very scary thing to face. Russia is gravely underestimating this Swedish jet. Here's what you need to remember. The Swedish jet is impressive in itself, but all the more so because of the armament that comes with it. It has an onboard MBDA meteor-guided air-to-air missile that can travel at Mach 4. The urge to establish one's martial prowess over one's adversaries took many different forms in the pre-modern period, from references to fighting spirit and superior force of will to invocations of divine favor. 
But in the centuries following the tremendous technological progress of the Industrial Revolution, a new paradigm has taken hold. The enemy will crumble before our superior military hardware. From Chinese media claiming that Taiwan's F-16 fleet is no match, for the J-11 to Russian media claiming that the S-400 will send the F-35 to its grave, it has become a well-established tradition for defense outlets to speak up their nation's weapons while deriding those of rival powers. So, when one of Russia's foremost defense outlets, Vono Obosreni, published a comparison piece between Su-30, Su-35 and Sweden's Gripen Ing fighter by Russian defense writer Yevgeny Demontsev, the expectation was clear. The reality, however, is as refreshing as it is surprising. Demontsev's iconoclastic intent is readily apparent from the article's headline, Gripen Ing harmless for Su-30 and Su-35? Take off the rose-colored glasses. The author is reacting to a recent statement by Commander-in-Chief of the Swedish Air Force, Major General Mats Helgesen, that the JAS-39E, F also known as Gripen Ing, was made to destroy the Su-30SM and Su-35. Extremely unprofessional and self-aggrandizing, as Helgesen's comments are, Demontsev warns that it would be premature to dismiss them as pure bluster. He notes that his colleagues, guided by patriotic sentiment, and made complacent by the Su-30, Su-35 superior numbers, hastily concluded that the latest Gripen variants, pose no real threat to Russia's air force. This conclusion, however, relies on what is only a surface-level overview of Gripen NG's specification sheet. That is, it fails to consider how Gripen NG's avionics, electronic countermeasures, ECM, and armaments are designed to work in tandem for the express purpose of countering Russia's current Suhoi line. Of particular concern is Gripen's onboard MBDA Meteor ramjet-powered air-to-air missile, which is able to retain its Mach 4 speed even at a distance of up to 130 to 150 kilometers from its launch point. Though formidable in of itself, Demontsev argues that the Meteor missile is especially dangerous considering that it can be guided by, and receive tracking information from, a wide range of Swedish ships, ground-based radar systems, and nearby aircraft through SAAB's potent Global Eye Airborne Early Warning and Control AEW and C, system. Demontsev expresses concern that the Su-30SM and Su-35 currently lack the means to counter Gripen NG's offensive capabilities. The RVVAPD, a modernized, Mach 5 ramjet variant of Russia's R-77 medium-range air-to-air missile that should have been capable of engaging meteor-equipped fighters, was widely teased in 1999 but never made it into serial production. Demontsev concludes that the two Suhoi fighters lag behind the Gripen Ing in key performance areas, and will continue to do so if the RVVAPD project is not revived and completed with due haste. Demontsev's analysis was not only well received by Vono Obozrini's readership, at least, judging by the 150 plus comments on the article, but exists as a necessary corrective to a defense commentary sphere that it is otherwise all too ready to downplay the capabilities of their adversaries while seeing their own, to borrow the author's terminology through rose-colored glasses. Nor is this an exclusively Russian phenomenon. To one degree or another, all great military powers must wrestle with the ongoing challenge of accurate threat perception.